James Holder for iFilm London. Today we are in Electric Avenue, Brixton. With me, I've got Brixton heavyweight Ian Lewison. Just gonna have a little chat, have a little catch up, and yeah, just see what's going on. Chatting, big man, you all right? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. Yeah, it's good. How was your uh, Christmas and your New Year's and all that? Well, apart from the fact that I was sick, other than that, it was good, man. Yeah. yeah if I can good. just ask you to speak up a little bit, Mr. Yeah, Lewison, I was so sick can, uh... over the Christmas and New Year's and everything. But other than that, I've been good. I've yeah. been good. Yeah. How has your training been? Um, no, training's been good. Training's been great, man. Especially working with Don and working with a whole new team, organisation, Steve Goodwin. Training's been great. Yeah? Yeah. Don Charles, new trainer, new outlook. Yeah, he's going to new training. He's bringing new ideas, bringing new approaches to training and everything. So it's making the whole experience of training enjoyable again. It's just like bringing new ideas to the table. So far in your career, you've had, not I wouldn't say a stop-start career, but you've not fought as often as maybe you would like to have fought. Or as often as you've been out, do you see yourself mm. fighting a lot more in 2013? No, definitely, yeah, because I've been working with Steve right, Goodwin as, he's, as, it, plan, as it is right now. We've got like a lot more dates on the table from now, so we're definitely going to have a lot more fights. Definitely going to be a lot more active. 2012, couple of big fights, notably the Dorian Darch fight. Saw mm. quite a bit of a uh, quite a bit of build up on Twitter, shall we say, and a little bit of banter going on. Yeah. And all that. Could you talk me through that a little bit? Yeah, it started like when the fight was made. Dorian and his people then started Twitter, started coming on the Twitter talking about what they're going to do to me. They're going to beat me up, this and that. But everyone who watched the fight knows how and where it went. Mm. Was you anticipating more from that fight, or was that kind of how you expected that fight to be? No, but you know what? I ain't going to bad mouth him or nothing. At the end of that fight's come and gone. We've done what we had to do to sell the fight beforehand and everything. So as it is right now, he put up a good fight. He fought the best he could fight, which obviously wasn't good enough because he didn't come away with the win. But as it stands, he done what he, he tried to do, what he did, what he did, and it didn't work for him. I want to come back to boxing a little bit. Where we are now, Electric Avenue, Brixton. Do you feel at home here? Yeah, this is where I grew up. This is where I spent my childhood, Brixton, man. What's it like growing up in Brixton? No, nah, it was great, it was great. I loved it, and I still do love Brixton. Yeah, I've seen, yeah. just walking about, I've seen people coming up and saying hello to you and wishing you the best and all that. Is that kind of how it is for you around here? Yeah, it is, especially, in the, it's like with anyone, in any area you grow up in, you're always going to know people, so when you're walking down the area, you're going to see people that are going to say hello to you and all that stuff, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's quite a, quite a famous place, isn't it? Electric Avenue. Yeah, well, I see Eddie Grant and that. Maybe. Yeah, as I say, Electric Avenue, first place in London to get electricity. That's why they call it Electric Avenue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's kind of got a lot more trendy around here in recent years? Like, no, it's influence. definitely changed a lot. It's definitely changed Changing. a lot. So just see, like, as growing up, when I was growing up in the early 90s, a bit more and stuff like that. Yeah, you can see it now. It's more cosmopolitan. It's more trendy in yeah. the sense of like, there's more nightlife or more places to go now. Yeah, no, for real. Mm. Mirror. Back on boxing terms. We're start of 2013 now. What what be a good start for this year, or what what you guys got planned for this going into start this year? Um, well, we've got a few announcements to make, and they're going to come out. Anyone who's following me on Twitter on Ian Lewis and on Facebook, Facebook Ian Lewis, and they'll hear the big announcements that are going to be made. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to give nothing away just yet. Not at this present point in time, but if you follow me on Twitter and stuff like, that, you'll get first-hand information as and when. Yeah. I see you working with uh, Steve. We've got a new one pound fish man on the phone. <laughs> I see you working with uh, Steve Goodwin now. What's Steve Goodwin like and what, what, do you, what do you make of him as a person? No, Steve Goodwin's a great guy because at the end of the day, if he says what he says happens, he's, he's not a person that tells you one thing and then he's not a man of his word in the sense that he tells you something just to get you signed on dotted line and once you sign, he doesn't make it happen. Whatever he says, he's made materialise. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, I can't fault him on that. Mm. What? Heavyweight division, there's been a lot of heavyweights spoke about recently. Mm -hmm. David Price, Tyson Fury. Yes, yeah. Obviously, fish, the big fish, yeah. the David Hay. Um, yes, yeah. A lot of yeah. other heavyweights. Do you see yourself in the same bracket as them guys? Well, why shouldn't I? I box with them on the England team. Mm -hmm. So then I compete with them at the highest level in the amateurs. So why can't I do it as a pro? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think maybe a lot of people have kind of under, not underrated you, but you're not on the radar enough as you should be at the moment? No, but you know what? That's down to the fact that I've been inconsistent in the pro career in the sense that I've been fighting on average once a year and at the end of the day you can't expect notoriety and you can't expect people to be taking you seriously when you're fighting so when you're so inactive so at the end of the day in all honesty it is how it is 
I've got to take it how it is. I've heard a lot of people speak about you from the amateurs. Yeah. And the pedigree and level of, of what they speak speak to you is very high. It's very high. Yeah, but anyone who's watched any one of my fights will know at the end of the day what I bring to the table, the skills and the power and the and the fight. As I showed in the dart fight, I showed I'm able to box when I want to. I'm able to sit on a man's chest and fight them if I choose to. So at the end of the day, I bring everything to the table in that sense. See recently on your Twitter, um, I see you and another one of our uh, British heavyweights, uh, Richard Towers from Sheffield, having a little bit of a banter and stuff on Twitter. Well, for me, it looked banter for you guys. Yeah. It's obviously serious and stuff, but could you talk to me a little bit through that? Oh, you're talking about Richard the Coward Towers, yeah? Richard the what, sorry? Richard the Coward Towers. Wow. Yeah. Richard, what he needs to do, Richard, and I'm talking to you directly, what you need to do is come from behind your mum's skirt and make the fight happen because at the end of the day, he came on Twitter, started chatting shit to me, started chatting rubbish to me, and now all of a sudden he don't want to fight. So what's all that about? He wants to he wants to go outside, drop the ball, play with the big boys, and when they start playing rough, he wants to pick up his ball and run home. That's what he wants to do. Do you think um, Richard Towers, I know he's had like, I think he's 14 fights, he's obviously still undefeated. Do you think promotional terms, it, it might be a bigger fight than than what it would be for you for the way it is for Richard Towers at this moment in time? Yeah, well, from record sales and everything, at the end of the day, it would be um, a step up on paper for me, yeah. Definitely. Do you see it as a step up or? Nah, he's crap. Playing the straight, he's crap. He showed in the, in, Gregory, in the Gregory fight. What was he doing? Calypso? Mumbo? I don't know, what the hell was he doing? Contemporary dance in that fifth round. I thought it was I thought it was boxing me personally, but then in the fifth round he came out and he started dancing. I'm just wondering whether he was on Celebrity Come Dance or what. Do you think Steve Goodwin will try and make that fight, Richard Towers' fight? I think we can try, but at the end of the day, I don't think Good, I don't think um, Towers wants none of it because at the end of the day, he's he's the one who came out, started on me, and now him and all his male groupies are on Twitter chatting rubbish towards me. And the thing about it is, Richard don't want none of it. He don't want. He don't want to fight. At the end of the day, how can you pick someone out, call him out, start cussing him, insulting him? Then I turn back and say to him, Richard, done all the talking, fight me. Then the man's gonna back out of it now. So Richard, come from behind your mum's blouse. You can't hide behind her all the time. Fight me. That's what he needs to do. Well, I, I would like to see that fight, mate. I think it'll be a good domestic fight. And yeah, I think you and Richard Towers would definitely be, be one people want to see. It'll be a good fight. Yeah, definitely, 100%. It would be a good fight, but well, while it lasts, anyway, for the first, I'll give him at least three, four rounds. For the first four rounds, it'll be interesting. After that, I'll chin him in the fifth. The last couple of fights, you've predicted victories, and maybe round or two out of the way, but pretty much, you've been pretty much spot on with your predictions so far. Ian. Yeah, but you know, the only reason why the predictions ain't working to the round as it is now is because of the inconsistency, but now where I've had fights consecutively now, I'm actually getting my flow back, and now that I've got my flow back and everything, I'm going to be able to be able to get in the ring and get in the round and when I say to him second round, it's going to be second round because the sharpness and everything's going to be there. Are you motivated to win British titles? Is this your goal? What's your outlook on everything? My motivation is just getting there and beating people up. That's all, plain and straight and all honesty. That is it. I, feel, I'm just, I, just, I just enjoy the aspect of fighting. I just enjoy fighting. I just want to get in there and beat people up. Obviously I want titles and obviously I want the money but right about now my motivation is just to beat up Richard Towers just to beat the shit out of Richard Towers. That's what I'm motivated to do. So that's why I don't honestly think it will happen because if you look at his record, who has he fought? He, all his opponents have been hand-picked and even then, Gregory was the, on paper the best one and Gregory basically beat him but it was the ref that won the fight for Towers. it be an interesting fight. We have a very interesting matchup. and I, I, Like I said, I hope if Richard, if you're making this, Richard Towers is people, I hope we can uh, see that fight on the future because that would be a good one to watch. Yeah. No, it would be a good one, it would be a good one. Then I could shut him and all his male groupies up. No, sorry, him and all his illiterate male groupies who keep sending messages on Twitter. Would you like to see some more support on Twitter? Like, I know you haven't been on Twitter that long, but just in general, people getting behind you and showing you a bit more support? No, but as it stands, I have, like you said, I haven't been on Twitter that long, but as it stands, I've been given a lot of love from it, especially after the um, Dart fight. I've been showing a lot of love on Twitter, so I can't argue. Obviously, I'd like my support on Twitter to, to, to increase and grow. Yeah, I would. Would you give your Twitter a plug just so the people if you yeah. are watching this? So if anyone good. can follow me on Twitter, it's Ian Lewison at Twitter at Ian Lewison or Facebook me, Ian Lewison. No, obviously selling tickets is a big part of the mm -hmm. ticket game and the fight game, so Twitter's a very valuable tool. Like, no, I'm, it myself, is. I've seen fights being made on Twitter. Mm -hmm. No, it is. Twitter is very good. At the end of the day, Twitter, I feel at the end of the day, is, is very good because it keeps people in the loop. In any, 
announcements that are going to be made, you can make them on Twitter so all your supporters on Twitter can have first-hand information. They don't have to wait about to hear anything. Training with Don Charles, notably Don Charles, the main fighter that he's trained before and quite trains uh, Derek Chisora. Mm -hmm. Picked up any tips from Derek? Any sparring with Derek? What's, yeah, what's I've been on? sparring a bit with Derek and we've been, we've been helping each other at the end of the day. There's been certain things, like during sparring, I'll do certain things, he'll catch me, he'll do certain things, I'll catch him. So I, it's one of them things like where I'm learning from him and obviously he's learning from me, we're helping each other. What do you make of the enigma that is Derek Chisora? Derek is just Derek, isn't it? He's just, he's just he's just him. Derek is just Derek. He's just a character. He's just him. That's him. I like him. No, he's I a, think he kind of likes us. He tolerates us. He's a cool so. dude. He is. He's a cool like dude. Him. Yeah. No, he's a cool. He's a cool guy. So you settled at Don Charles's gym now. This is this is you. You can no, see this is where you're No, I feel good there. Be. I feel good. I feel good. Yeah, the training's been going well. We're working well together and everything. The environment, and everything, everything's good. Don's a cool guy. I like Don. He is. He knows boxing. Yeah, he, he knows boxing and he loves boxing, that's the thing. He actually has a genuine interest in boxing. He actually genuinely enjoys it. Brilliant. Alright, well, I want to thank you for taking us around and showing us a little bit, and talking to us about obviously what's going on. But again, is there anything that I haven't brought up that you, you would like to talk to me about before we uh, vamoose out, out of Brixton? Um, I think we've covered everything, yeah. Yeah, I think we've covered everything. We've highlighted that Richard Coward is Oh, sorry, Richard the Coward Towers is a coward, yeah. And he needs to come from behind his mum's skirt and actually make the fight happen. How, what I don't understand is how can he come calling me out, insulting me, and then when I turn around and say to the man, fight me, he's, he's finding every angle to get out of it. The man is like he's got no bones in his body. He's been trapped in a room and he's found a way out. He's slipped through a hole. He's like a mouse. He's managed to slip through a hole. The man, he just needs to stop talking rubbish in the fight. All right. Well, on that note, um, I want to thank uh, Ian Lewis again for coming and taking us down Brixton. It's been very enjoyable and a different kind of clip, and we look forward to seeing you out in 2013, big man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. This is James Holder of Ian Lewis and I film nothing.